Good morning, glad to see some faces in this session about developing an HTML5 client with LightSwitch. My name is Peter Jong de Jong. I work at the university here in Leuven and in my spare time I like to work with Drupal and that's why I wanted to present today. So what am I going to talk about? First of all I'm going to introduce you how I started developing with LightSwitch. Uh, next up is something about Visual Studio and LightSwitch. And since it's a typical Microsoft product, can you use it with Drupal? And to conclude, uh, I'll give some uh, uh, some, some pro and con from the methods I explained here. Um, so, can you speak a little bit louder or use the microphone, please? Oh, I'll use the microphone then. On, on a free event sponsored by Microsoft, I saw a light suit presentation. And it was really amazing how fast you could develop an HTML5 client with this product. It was also really easy to add some searching and filter capabilities. And out of the box, they offered cool controls for different kinds of data. So, what's the Studio Studio? It's basically the integrated development environment. Uh, created by Microsoft, a light switch is a Visual Studio extension. So next to HTML5, you also have uh, support for Silverlight and SharePoint applications, and you can use different kind of data sources, just uh, uh, Microsoft SQL, Azure, and Open Data. And the HTML5 client is based on jQuery and jQuery Mobile. So as so as I mentioned before, what does this talk about? Well. Can you use LightSuite to build an HTML5 client for a Drupal website? And it's basically the story of my quest on making those two things work together. So first off, what kind of data lights can LightSuite consume? Well, basically, of course, SharePoint and uh, Microsoft SQL. There is also integration with OData service. What is this OData? Well, it's basically a standardized protocol for creating and consuming data APIs, it's vendor independent, so that's always a nice feature to have. And it provides a uniform way to expose and manipulate data. So it's basically learned once and applied everywhere. So next step in my quest was to go find some module uh, to present your contents in this open data. Uh, protocol and I found the o o data server module is based on a PHP library, again written by Microsoft, and basically it exposes entities, properties, and fields. The downside of this project is that it's a sandbox project, so for the moment it's only with only operations, and uh, more advanced features are not yet implemented. So basically, after installing this module, you have additional settings. And in these settings, you basically tell this module what kind of content in your Drupal site you want to expose. For instance, in this case, I want to expose pages. And for every content type, you can select what kind of properties you want exposed. For instance, in this case, I want to expose the title. If it's a promoted post, it's sticky. And the really cool thing is you can also add foreign keys. For instance, every uh, piece of content is created by someone. So you can add a foreign key. In this case, a user basically say uh, expose also the properties of the user who created the kind of uh, content. You can also expose uh, fields next to properties. In this case, there's only one field. Uh, the body field. So you just select what you need and then the old data server module will expose it and make it available for everyone uh, to consume it. So this is 
Visual Studio with the light switch uh, plugin. I already created uh, a project. So the only thing you have to do is you have your two parts, server and HTML client. So server is basically where you add uh, data sources. So in this case, I want to add an open data service. Notification cards, and then it go go fetch the, the feeds. I can select everything that exposed. So next two pages, I also expose some other uh, content types and entities. So I'm basically only interested in pages. So I select this one. So it retrieves all the information. It's basically pulling in the table. Uh, of uh, pages. So that's the first step. The next step is to create some kind of uh, browser to see uh, the available pages. So that's really easy. You basically just add a screen. You have three templates. In this case, you just want to browse the data screen. And you just select the data source. And there you go. You already have the screen. Showing a listing of all available page contents of your website. So, then just start it already. And that's the basic uh, HTML client. So, you see, in a few minutes, you already have something to browse through your page. Of course, there's not a lot of functionality. If you click on something, nothing happens, but I'll show you later. It's also really easy to change uh, the layout. So now it's just a list, but you also can also change it. For instance, if you like tiles, there you go. Uh, if you use tiles, it also changes the layout of the information. Just here, uh, you can see what kind of controls it uses. So from the data it pulls from the open data feed, for instance, uh, the title is defined as text, so you can change. You can, you can choose text controls, so there's basically text, but you can also choose other text controls, for instance, text box, text area, and so on. In case of promote, this is basically just a boolean, so you have different custom controls, for instance, a flip switch. So, okay. so what does this look like? Really easy. You just say, change some settings, right? So it generates all the code, and you can basically start immediately uh, using this. Uh, this is just an overview of the contents. You can also make a more detailed screen. It's always the same set of action. You add a screen, you select something. You select the correct template, in this case the view details. You choose your data source. And there you go. Now you have created a screen, but you still need uh, you still need uh, to connect those two screens. For instance, if you click on a tile in the overview screen, you want uh, to see the details, so it's really easy. You just select the tab, and here you have an action, an item tab action. At this moment, it's still not, but you can just change it. So you can just select load pages, so that's what we want to view, and you just select view selected, and that's it. So just start it again. And if you click on it, it's the default layout, but you can drag and drop to rearrange the layout. Only problem is here, you have the body. And well, it just retrieves the body just from like this in the database. It's 
uh, XML that Max rendered. So how can you change that? Well, you also have a different option for the body. You also have a custom control. And what this means is you can write your custom JavaScript code uh, to render this specific type of uh, information in your own way. So I'm just going to copy and paste. So uh, what I do here, I uh, create just a diff element. Well, you see that the JavaScript function has two uh, parameters. So the element is the surrounding HTML uh, element, and content item basically contains the value of the property you want to render. So in this case, uh, I take the value property of content item, and I, I tell the diff to take this as HTML, and the last step, I add the newly uh, diff, create a diff to the surrounding element. So now you see here right away the yeah, no, what went wrong? I changed the wrong body. So I had to change the body from the details screen, but you see here. The, the body rendered in the overview screen, but it's just the same uh, chain of steps. You, you create a custom control at your JavaScript code, and you see it's quite easy uh, to change this. So, I already talked about this, so, really easy to expose the entities or the content types you want to. Uh, give uh, to expose properties foreign keys. You add a data source, you create your screen based on templates. And I already showed you this, how to add a data source, overview screen and a detail screen. So, so far, <coughs> it's really easy and the result is quite impressive. It's quite impressive. I also showed you this, what with the body, it was first just HTML code. But you want to render it, so this is again the same code and uh, close it. So if you want, you also want to add some search capabilities. For instance, you want to search for a title. Uh, again, it's not that hard. So here, on the left-hand side, you have an edit query option, and there you can add some parameters. For it. In this case, I want to add a filter to the title. To contain the parameter, and create a new one. What I want to do is to add a text box where you can add where you can write a keyword and uh, you want to filter out the pages with the keywords in the title. Uh, it is best to mark parameters as optional. Uh, so if you don't fill out any keywords, you get an overview of all the pages. So we're back to, this, to the browse screen. You see here, the parameters added. To add something to search, just drag it to your screen. Again, uh, light switch knows it's text control. Now it's just basically test that if you want to enter a keyword, you have to change it to a text box. And if you add a keyword, it should, there you go, it just filters out only the pages uh, with the keywords in the title. And the last thing you want to do is, 
also to edit some uh, some content. So again, quite easy. You add the screen, you choose the add edit detail screen, and you check the data you want to. Uh, well, we have a screen to edit, but we have to connect it to our overview page. I'll show you something else. You have also have a comments bar. So, uh, uh, it's really easy. You just select edit selected. So, when you select uh, a tab, and next you, you click on the edit button, it will uh, show an edit screen to, to make changes to the selected page. You also can change some icons. Yeah, of course. I forgot I have the the on the tab still available. Sorry about that. So we generated an ad edit page. Unfortunately, since the or data search module does not yet support updates, you cannot change anything for now. So that's what I already did say to add the edit screen, but since it's already only you cannot change. So what's the conclusion of the uh, open data protocol? Well it's quite easy to uh, create an HTML5 client. Relationships are already defined, so that's no problem, but the cons are it's really limited, and uh, you're limited to read operations and ads. To add and edit operations are not yet supported. However, if you want something more advanced, so you still need to find a way to edit or add new uh, content. So a possible alternative is the MySQL connector. So basically, out of the box, Light Switch only supports Microsoft SQL Server, but it's also a connector to connect uh, your uh, program with uh, MySQL databases. So if you install this, you can also access uh, database directly. So let me switch to the. So it's this basically the same way you attach your data source, but unless, instead of choosing all data, you choose database. You select the database you want to use. and it fetches all the tables available in the database. So since it's fetching all the tables, it can take some time uh, to select those. This is another disadvantage of you accessing the database directly. You need to know how these tables work. For instance, if you want pages and uh, their body, you have to select multiple tables. So in this case, I have to select the data field body table. Field data and body. I need the nodes table. <coughs> and I also select the user table.
Second disadvantage of this way is you have to define the relationships themselves. For instance, if you look at the nodes table or the, or the, the body table, you have a reference to the entity ID, it's a reference to the to the piece of content the body belongs to. You have to define it yourself. So you have to add relationships from field data body to nodes. In theory, it's a one-to-one. -one. Then you have to select the coding keys. Now you get the nice error one to one which is not supported, so you have to change it to a one to many. Same thing for the user, so in the notes table you have a user ID. You have to find a way itself to make the connection to the user table. And this is a second Another disadvantage of using direct database access. The error on, on the bottom of the screen says the shared property selected do not have the same data type. So the user ID in the node table is defined as an integer, and the user ID in the user table is defined as long integers. So, from my point of view, those are both integers, so this should be no problem, but apparently it is. So, again, there's a disadvantage compared to open data. So we cannot connect the nodes with users. <laughs> so once we've done this, you can basically again add screens. Similar. Of course, it doesn't look that nice because it's the way all the tables are designed. And of course, there's another disadvantage the way the, the, the columns are defined in the tables, for instance, uh, promote it's true or false, but in the database it's defined as an integer, so the flip control. It's not available since it's just an integer, so only text controls are available. So if you want, for, for instance, for this property to switch, you have to write your own custom controls again. So I change it to a custom control. It's already available. So I create a new flip button and I add it to the surrounding element. Sure. So basically covered all these things. Since you are accessing the database directly, it is possible to edit content. So, let me show you that. It's basically the same sequence of actions. So, we'll add. And since we added uh, a relationship to the field data body, you can also uh, choose to include uh, those in that table.
So let's add that on top. And we want to edit the selected page. So now you can change everything. This is the basic information from the notes. And if you, there's also a tab edit, full data. It's, the layout isn't what it should be, but you can easily change it. So this is the first step of the, first step for the details from the page. And then here is the second one. So it's the list. And I'm going to add a rose layout. Just going to remove some. This you want to change the value of the body. Again, it's text, but if you want to change, you better put it in the text area. And it saves. So, just to show you, it really has changed. This was the page I changed if I clear the cache. There you go. That awards I added. Is stored in uh, in the database. So you see, it's rather easy to uh, write these kind of clients, but you still need a lot of customization because you're accessing the database uh, directly. Again, since you're working with the database itself, you can also add a search and add a clean filter button. So another way to do it is to write a new query. So to add a query. And we can do add filters. And we want the user to fill out the keywords, so you add a new parameter, make it optional, so if you don't uh, enter the keywords, you see all, all of them, and then uh, create a new screen, and here you can then select the newly created query. Same way, just drag and drop the title to the screen. <coughs> oh, that's already there. Change the control to text box. you have to choose which screen is your home screen so it's still the old one so I have to set the new screen to the home screen there you go 
Now, from user experience, this is not really, well, it doesn't really, really look nice. So, you can also add a button below to, to filter. So, add a button. So, we can add a button to show a pop up. Means. And you just drag and drop the element. Okay. And I'm going to add a clear a button as well. I'm going to write my own message. Wait. You can edit in the code which is executed. I'll just add another query, another parameter to find <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm a bit confused because I've practiced a lot before this in three match I think go wrong. So what we basically do here, if you want to clear the filter, I just say uh, assign any URL to it and I want to close the pop-up screen. If you want to see that pop up, you have to add it to the comment. So you just choose your pop up, and then you can go select any pop up screen you, you create. So, for instance, I want the sticky, there you go, I want the non sticky. Pages. And if you just want to clear the filter, it's okay. 
So to conclude this option, accessing the MySQL database directly, you don't have to write a client completely from scratch, scratch <coughs> but the downside is you have to define all the relationships all by hand. There's also inconsistent data types. For instance, I showed you the user ID in one table is defined as an integer, in another one it's a long integer. Those types don't match, so you can't define your relationships. Also wrong data types, for instance, sticky or promote. These are basically booleans, true or false, but they're defined as integers. So uh, light switch uh, suggests the wrong uh, controls. So instead of uh, uh, flip switch, you see uh, only text controls. And you also need a lot of knowledge of the table, so how, where can you find the fields you want to show in your client. So to conclude, light switch and Drupal, it's not impossible, but it's a lot of custom work. The data server module seems the way to go, but it's still uh, a sandbox for it, so it's really limited. So for a very basic client, that's really, uh, really good. If you want something more, the only alternative is direct database access, but as I mentioned, you have a lot of work to do, a lot of custom coding, so if it's worth the trouble, it's an alternative. If not, I mean, Light Switch is not the right product for you. I also added some resources, for instance, the Open Data website. It's really interesting to see what it's all about and some uh, Light Switch related resources. So the basic homepage and also really the how do I videos are really nice to some advanced features. If you want to try it out, it's better to uh, work with local tables with proper columns with proper data types, and then you can see uh, the real strength of uh, light switch. Yeah. You have date times, email fields, uh, uh, address fields, even. and there's also some examples of including third-party JavaScript libraries, for instance, maps. Uh, so I really think it's a good product to write HTML client. Unfortunately, it's not very suitable for Drupal right now, but I hope there will be a lot of change in the future. And this concludes my talk. Okay. Any questions so far? So I, I just want to um, check out the conclusions here. Um, I mean, it's great that you, you work at the university, so you, you, know, you have a chance to do these research things, but basically the conclusion is, Okay, you looked at light switch and Drupal and how well they work together. Uh -huh. The conclusion is, for practical purposes, it just ain't there. Yeah. Yeah. When I just started, it looked promising, and that's why I submitted the yeah, session. Yeah. But along the way, it turned out. If you want something more than just consuming content, it's really hard and a lot of custom coding. So I didn't want to put it so bluntly, but yeah. it boils down to that. If you want something, a serious HTML5 client with editing capability or integrated third party APIs, it's, it's better to write, to write something from scratch. Yeah. But the, thing, the things you can do are really easy. So, but unfortunately, it's really limited. But the downside is it's not maintainable because if I don't mind just maintaining the web app, I just go using wizards from, uh, from .NET, and it's really a catastrophe. Yeah. That's that's also a downside when you use a product where you don't write everything by hand. Mm -hmm. You have to that work with the data layer that you build yeah. yourself. Otherwise, yeah. it's, you change there something here and it's broken there. It's really that's a that's nightmare. <laughs> and I see it's just the same with light switch. Yeah. So uh, that's a bit that's a bit of downside of this presentation. It looked promising when I submitted the session. But so it saves us a lot. Saves us a lot of it. Yeah. Oh, thank you. If we yeah, have it does. Yeah. That someone told me no result is also a result. So I've done all the work you know. Is it also uh, possible to use uh, RESTful services to connect to Drupal? And I, I don't really know how Visual Studio Light, light Switch uh, works. Uh, um, no, there's there is a way to, to even update and uh, delete and read notes from uh, from RESTful service. 
Um, and that's your question. Is there something available to use RESTful services? Or yes. are you saying that something? No, no, no. no. I, I, I see the question. Uh, well, I think there is maybe someone I've written this kind of uh, plugins. The thing is, it's a product for Microsoft, so they're focusing on their own products. We've got, for instance, MySQL, SharePoint, comes out of the box. So, anything else? I'm not saying it's impossible, but I think you have to do a lot of custom control of, of have some luck and find someone who did the work for well, you. Well, RESTful is very well integrated with any open source. Uh, it should be possible requirements. because open data is it's based on RESTful yeah. APIs. So, since they, uh, they have, the, it's possible to consume open data, data source, I think it's also possible to use RESTful RESTful APIs. That, that would fix your problem with updating uh, the UV. Yeah. yeah, but I'm not sure how much custom code you have to write because you have to, well, you can use RESTful API, but then again you have to find a way to get uh, data out, define data tables and so on, so relationships. So. Are there any good alternatives for, uh, for doing this? this is I know there are some, for instance, I believe it's called Titanium. It's more, uh, well, it's, they have their own kind of JavaScript. And it compiles to, well, it's, it doesn't compile to HTML5, then, but it compiles to uh, iOS app or Android app. I was basically looking something for uh, consuming content on tablets, basically, uh, handheld devices, and HTML was one option. But if, if, that's, if that's the purpose, you can also use something like that, some other that compile their own program language to iOS app or Android app or HTML5. So Titanium is one I know, but other alternatives 